All right, man. I figured it out. I figured it out, man. I figured out what I haven't done. I haven't. I haven't told my story. I haven't even be talked about it all. Like what I what I've been through or what I've done. Talk about what I think and what I feel, and that's cool because not a lot of people do that. That's what's interesting about it. That's why people. That's what people should start doing more. But I don't talk about myself much, so I'm going to because it's scary to me, and that's a good reason to do it. Um, my name's Ian. I'm 27. I'm from Ohio, in the U.S. Uh, it's by the Great Lakes. It's an awful. St- it's not an awful state. It's an okay state. It's decent. It's it's r- Midwest and it's really conservative. Kind of dull. I, I lived there till I was 18, and then I went to college uh, at 18 at Kent in, at, to Kent State, Kent State University in Ohio, right by where I'm from. Which I'm from Akron, from Cuyahoga Falls, right outside of Akron. So I went to Kent State for theater, and uh, this is where I met my girlfriend now, who, who I've been with for about eight years on and off. We broke up four times, I think four times, three or four times. It's a roller coaster of a relationship. She's been a huge part of my life for the last eight years, and she's a big part of the reason why I'm so in touch with my emotions. I've always been such a math and science guy, such a left brain, thinking, not feeling, not emotional type of dude. And she really opened me up. She's very intense, very emotional. And we met my freshman year of college. We became fantastic friends. We were great friends. And then we started dating. And we broke up. And then we started dating. And then she cheated on me. And we broke up. And then we started dating. Then I, she, well, I, I it was my insecurity. She was really depressed. She, she, she has lived with depression for her entire life, which is amazing to me. I think people that are depressed are so interesting because they're, they're crazy, you know? We're all so fucking crazy, but they're so in touch with the craziness. I think I'm depressed. It's weird to say that out loud, but I am. Um, saying shit like that shakes you to the core. So, I moved to New York City after college, 2001, right before September 11th. I worked at Ground Zero. Um, and she was living in Ohio, we were still, together and she moved out to New York and it was okay but we weren't communicating then on a whim I I was freaking out I was all depressed God knows why I mean September 11th you know the Trade Center there was no work I wasn't doing any theater I did a couple of short films but I was just like really playing just playing a lot of video games really unhappy and I decided I want to move to Chicago so we moved to Chicago and she went with me and we lived together in Chicago for the first time and that was awful (laughs) <laughs> awful, awful. We uh we broke up after about four or five months. It was in we were in one bedroom. It was agonizing. I mean, she was really depressed, and I was just absorbing myself in the video games. It was terrible. It was sad, but but good. I mean, you know what is good? It was it was great. It was unbelievable. We broke up. She moved in with a friend of ours, and that friend's roommate who was also a, another friend of ours moved in with me we got at our own place his name's Eric cool as hell amazing guy amazing guy we lived together for a couple of years in Chicago then I, she moved out to LA and we were broken up for like two years and I was single for the first time in my life since I've been 19 for the first time in my life that I've been confident and single and that's a totally different thing than being unconfident and single when you're confident and you're single you can do anything you want anything for the first time, anything. There's no, you answer to nothing and no one and you can do anything. And you really believe, you know, you feel like you can do anything. And the more you feel like you can do anything, the more more you can do. So I started, you know, hooking up with lots of chicks, which was really cool because I'd never done that before. And it was great. And then I decided one day, I don't, I want to move to LA. And I want to be an actor in LA. I want to make a career out of it. I don't want a day job. And I want to get back with Amanda. So I told her, and she freaked out because she moved on. You know, she had a boyfriend. I had a girlfriend, kind of. And I, I, but I wanted to. I wanted to. And why not? You know, you got. If you want to do something in life, do it. Don't be afraid. Don't don't think about doing it. Just do it. So I set a date, May first of last year, and I moved. 
and we, we lived together again. We lived in a one bedroom. And this is where the story gets interesting because about six months ago, we were living together and she, her depression was really bad, really bad, just getting worse and worse. And the doctor said she was bipolar and she wasn't on medicine of any kind. I was just burying myself in the video games. <laughs> That's my addiction is video games. And uh, it just got so bad and she would cry every day and I didn't know what to do. I would, I would watch, we would get ready to go out and she'd be standing by the closet just crying, looking at her clothes, just crying and telling me that I'm awful and telling me that she wants to kill herself. And it pushed me to the edge and I thought, we've broken up so many times, I thought, you know what, I could get out of this relationship. I want to get out of this relationship. But it wasn't that. It wasn't that I didn't want to be with her, it was that I didn't want to feel the pain anymore. So instead of that, instead of that, instead of fucking running, uh, we, we, throughout this, we talk, we're great friends, and we, we do talk all the time, we still talk all the time. That was a big part of our relationship, was we communicate. One night it came out that you have to be real, you can't, you can't fake it, you can't pretense, you can't hold back. You can't pretend, you can't make someone happy. And I really, it hit me like a brick on the head, like it just, and I stopped with the pretense, and I totally gave myself, and she lost it, went over the edge. It was, there was no more excuse. It was like she was forced to look at herself for the first time completely and totally. And it was like paralyzing pain. She would be on the ground, couldn't move for days, just laying there thinking someone was in the, in the apartment going to kill her. And it got so bad, and I decided, this is it, this is it. She, she's going to kill herself. So I, I bought her health insurance on my credit card and just, just encouraged her to get on medicine. And the thing about medicine now, this is what I think about medicine, is that it's not bad or good, but medicine gives you an opportunity to make yourself better. Medicine doesn't make you better. Medicine may slow down your racing thoughts. And then you have an opportunity to start working on your own issues, which I think are the things in our past that we don't talk about. The human mind can't tell the difference between what it's experiencing right now and, it's, and the memories. It doesn't know the difference. Your memories are very real. And if you don't talk about them, they're affecting you as if it's happening all the time. And you're just pretending like it's not. And of course you're going to be miserable. You have to embrace your past. Embrace the pain in your life. Let it talk, to it, talk about it to people. Open up about it. That's what I'm doing right now. This was awful. This was the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my life. And we overcame it. And we got a bigger place now with two floors. And my life has never been like this. I've never been so comfortable with people. I'm obsessed with people. People are all the same. We can overcome any kind of conflict. Where I've gotten to right now just by wanting to do it. Dude. Come on. I mean, you can't argue it. We're all the same. So let's fucking stop fighting. Let's stop with the conflict. Come on. You're in a relationship and you're breaking up. Stop it. Work through it. Open up. It's not up to them. It's up to you. It's always up to us. It's always up to us. Okay. I do enough of this bullshit. I, I preach. That's the problem is I preach. I want to entertain. At the same time. But I don't like, like entertaining like jokes. Well, now you know a little bit about me. I love YouTube.